Good morning, good evening to everybody. We are delighted to have, to have this uh, session on German politics and the view of the opposition. Thank you so much, uh, Steve, Dr. Sokol, yeah, for again partnering with us. Yeah. We're meeting uh, today yeah, on the eve of the uh, CDU party congress. Yeah. So the CDU will officially uh, tomorrow elect uh, the new uh, leader, Friedrich Merz. And uh, by electing Friedrich Merz, yeah, uh, um, ending yeah, its leadership crisis. Yeah. In contrast yeah, to the CDU, the CSU never had a leadership crisis. Yeah. Markus Söder is on top of the party and the CSU, uh, while, while now in opposition in German politics, yeah, but still is a strong political party yeah, with this stronghold in Bavaria. We are pleased to have Markus Blume with us. Yeah. Markus Blume is the secretary general of the CSU since a couple of years, since 2018. He was editor-in-chief of the party platform. And so to say, he is the mastermind of Bavarian politics. I hand it over to you, Steve, and we very much look forward yeah, to, to the uh, next, next uh, conversation, to the next uh, um, 30 or 45 minutes. Yeah, Thank you so much, Steve. Christian, a herzlichen Dank. It is always a delight to partner with you and your colleagues at the Hans Seidel Stiftung. And I am particularly pleased to welcome Markus Blume to today's conversation. I'd like to welcome our viewers to today's conversation as well and remind you that if you have questions, you can post them in the Q&A function in Zoom and I will do my best to fold your questions into the conversation as we go along. There is no shortage of domestic foreign policy issues for the new German federal government, from energy and the environment to public health and COVID response, and from infrastructure and digitalization to fiscal policy, the governing coalition has laid out an ambitious agenda. But what is the view from the opposition? Today, we have the opportunity to hear from Markus Blume, who has been a member of the Bavarian State Parliament since 2008, and the Secretary General of the CSU, or the Christian Social Union, since 2018 for a conversation. Um, at the request of Markus Blume, this conversation is under the virtual Chatham House rule, so um, that he can speak as openly and as candidly as he would like. Markus Blume, herzlich willkommen, and we are delighted to have you here with us today. Thank you very much, Steve, and uh, dear Christian, for the invitation and the organization of this uh, virtual meeting. Given the fact that uh, we have uh, our board meetings of CSU also under Chatham House rules, and uh, afterwards we can read all the details uh, in the media, I know what it is worth, uh, especially in, uh, in virtual times, but uh, um, I appreciate it very much that we can enter into a very uh, open discussion about these uh, really important uh, topics and issues. Well, thank you for that, and, and thank you for, for making that comment. Um, our conversation today comes uh, just before the CDU party conference tomorrow. Uh, but it also comes just after the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Berlin before his meeting with his Russian counterpart in Geneva today. And so before we, we dive into our conversation, which will focus more on German domestic policy, politics, I wanted to ask you to share your initial reaction to Secretary Blinken's visit to Berlin. I feel that is that it is a very important sign uh, that he visited Berlin um, uh, before uh, he started his uh, conversations uh, with the Russians, because especially in these times, it's important to demonstrate um, the worth um, of the transatlantic partnership. Um, frankly, um, in, in Germany, there's a feeling um, that we are talking all the times about important issues, uh, what's going on uh, in Europe, uh, a really um, serious crisis. Uh, and there's the feeling that Europe and Germany are not really um, at the table, um, given the uh, conversations in Geneva, for example. And uh, for that reason, it is really important to demonstrate um, that we are standing here together and have the same picture and the same idea what could contribute um, to a solution uh, for this conflict. I, I think that anyway, one of the reasons... Uh, and and uh, uh, please allow me this, this more political um, comment. 
Um, just a few minutes ago, I read in a German news magazine, uh, Der Spiegel, um, that uh, our chancellor uh, does not really have time uh, for meeting uh, with your president, with uh, President Biden. And I'm, I'm really surprised uh, if this is true. Um, this, well, let's say it's, it's a scandal because uh, it's important here uh, to be in uh, good talks uh, and um, so, so arguing that uh, there's not just enough time and there's so many other important meetings. Uh, I just cannot imagine what it could be that is so important that uh, he has no time to meet your president. I had not seen that report yet, um, and as you you mentioned it uh, before we went live with our with our viewers, um, I was quite surprised to hear that as well. Um, particularly because I think that part of the reason for Secretary Blinken's visit to Berlin at this time was to try to include European and German perspectives in the response to what is a very serious crisis on Europe's doorstep. Um, and that there has been some criticism about Europe and Germany not being at the table and that this was an important step to try to make sure that there was an inclusive approach. Exactly. We, we might come back to, to some foreign policy topics during the course of our conversation, but um, I'm, I'm really happy that we're talking very early in the new year because this is a period where one can still reflect a little bit on 2021, but also look ahead to what the coming year might bring. And so I thought we could really start our conversation by asking you to share your outlook for 2022 and to give us a sense, to give us your sense of what Germany's current primarily domestic but also foreign policy priorities are? Well, we are in the middle of the biggest possible crisis. Um, the pandemic situation is still there. Uh, we all, all have to fight the, the same issues. Um, we have the same problems, uh, the same challenges. And uh, my feeling is that basically every government um, all over the world is somehow struggling uh, with a strategy and with a, a proper approach uh, to overcome uh, COVID. Um, um, I see that um, the new wave uh, with Omicron is somehow different to what we've seen before with um, Delta. And um, for that reason, um, there might be a good indication maybe also to change strategy and that there is a chance uh, within the next few months, uh, ready to overcome COVID. But of course, we are still not there. And so everyone is fighting and struggling um, uh, to, to take the, the proper action. Uh, and so is um, the situation in Germany with our new government. It was not really helpful uh, that we had uh, the transition of government uh, in this um, time and in uh, this um, special period. But uh, given the circumstances, I would really say um, um, the handover and the transition was a very good example how in Western democracies uh, such a transition should take place, um, especially with a perspective uh, on the, the US transition, what was a little bit more bumpy, I would say, uh, compared to the smart transition we've seen here uh, in Germany. Anyway, of course, I really um, much uh, more would like uh, to be here as a member of a governing party in uh, Germany. But um, now, of course, we have to accept that we have a new role. We have to find our role as uh, opposition party. And um, so have um, the governing parties uh, to find their role. My feeling is, um, of course, every government uh, should get uh, there uh, should be given their 100 days uh, for a start and we wish the new government uh, all the best especially in these times but um, on the other hand side given all the crisis um, and all the challenges uh, it's not the time or we do not have the time for puppy protection we call it Weltenschutz uh, in, in, uh, in Germany and besides this my feeling is that Chancellor Scholz and his uh, new government is not really on track. Uh, so they are not really um, in the process of governing a, a country. Um, there was a promise, uh, especially of uh, Chancellor Scholz, 
um, that he will provide leadership. And um, basically everyone now in, in Germany says, okay, well, um, we expected this new leadership, but it's just not there. And people start asking, uh, where's the chancellor? Um, so did I just a few minutes ago on Twitter. So you've, you've put a lot out there and, and I just wanna push you on, on at least one of the things that you mentioned, namely um, the, the pandemic response, because I think um, although you acknowledge that there was a pretty smooth transition from the old government to the new government, there has also been some criticism that um, in the period following the election um, on, in late September until the new government actually took office, there was very little action taken. Um, the old government was in a, in a caretaker role. The new government hadn't assumed its, its position yet, its offices yet. And so there wasn't really much of a reaction or much of a response um, to the pandemic, either by the old government or by the new government. Um, do you think that Germany really suffered because of that um, in its pandemic response? And what could the new government be doing to try to have a stronger response to the, to the current fast sort of chapter that we're seeing um, with the COVID, COVID crisis? Uh, honestly, um, yes, we've seen some critical situations in the past um, three or four months um, fighting the uh, wave of the um, Delta um, virus, um, especially in the southern parts of uh, Germany and the eastern parts. Um, um, our health system really came into um, a very difficult situation. Um, overall, it was still manageable. And um, so the death points, um, et cetera, um, um, did not really um, rise. So in the end, I would say we've managed it. And uh, compared with other countries, um, we, we did quite well. Um, now we have a new situation, um, as I outlined before, um, with uh, Omicron. And uh, my feeling is that we now really need a checkup of all the corona management, if it is still the proper one uh, to fight Omicron, or if we have to decide on um, new measures. Um, I see in, in Germany that there is a... Um, People are fed up with, with all the corona stuff and um, they ask, is it still necessary um, or what is the proper reaction? And my feeling is or my conclusion is uh, that we now sh should really focus on implementing a compulsory vaccination in Germany. And on the other hand, bringing us into a position that we um, can bring back um, freedom to the people. That means lowering um, all the other efforts um, that are a burden, of course, uh, for everyone. Um, but again, and that's really an issue, an issue with our new government. Um, uh, Chancellor Scholz has a personal attitude. Uh, he, he, sa he said he has a strong opinion on vaccination. It's good and uh, we need it. Uh, but um, there's still no official attitude uh, or even proposal uh, from the government side uh, for a compulsory vaccination. And um, um, that's an issue because we fear that otherwise um, we could be in a, in a loop, uh, in a loophole uh, with uh, the corona management. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd, I'd now like to, to maybe spend a couple of minutes talking about um, the, the transition for the CDU-CSU from governing into the opposition. Um, obviously, after 16 years in power, uh, to now be in the opposition is, is quite a change. And you did comment on the fact that, that you would prefer to be representing um, the government than the opposition. Can you share with us sort of how that transition has been so far? And what sort of challenges um, your party has faced in, in that transition? Well, our, our pitch or our idea was a different one. Uh, we thought after 16 years, uh, we could reach again uh, the chancellery. Um, and um, well, honestly, I do not want to go again into the details. Uh, but if you ask me, of course, I, I do so. Um, but in the end, uh, we, we didn't manage. 
Uh, what I would like to say is, so the bottom line, the, the 16 years with Angela Merkel were very good ones. Uh, so I still remember in the year 2005, Germany was seen um, by the economists, for example, as the sick man of Europe. And after 16 years, and given all the crisis, uh, the euro crisis, uh, the financial crisis, um, the, uh, migration issues, um, all the stuff. Um, uh, in all these 16 years, um, um, to, to be still in a position um, of uh, a very low unemployment rate, of a very robust um, uh, economic growth, um, substantial investments in infrastructure, in climate change, uh, fighting climate change, etc., um, is um, something that is um, on the very positive side of every balance sheet. Uh, so again, the 16 years were good years uh, for Germany um, and should be a good basis um, for, for the upcoming years. On the other hand side, of course, um, there are many things um, that have to be taken um, action. Um, for, for example, digital transformation we're still not there where we should be uh, in the public uh, sector, uh, especially in the public sector, but also in, in, the, in the business sector. Yeah? So we have a, uh, an industrial transformation. We have the um, climate transformation uh, of our economy. Um, we ha have the, the disorder the, um, in, in, in global politics. Um, so there are many, many issues. Um, and really, I wish all the best for the new government. Uh, so in, in that sense, I mean, picking up on that, wishing the new government the best, and, and as you acknowledged earlier, the new government is not even 100 days into, into office. Um, do you have a sense of, of what tone the opposition might sent, set? Do you think it will be more confrontational or do you think it will be more cooperative? Um, you've, you've outlined a number of challenges that Germany faces and uh, how one addresses those challenges will be incredibly important in the, the months ahead. Well, I would say it's both. Uh, it's uh, cooperative um, uh, when we are in responsibility for Germany. Uh, so when it comes to um, the right way in addressing the next uh, Corona uh, COVID steps, um, um, of course, we are on board. Um, confrontational uh, when we have the feeling um, that um, the steps of uh, or the proposal of the government um, just uh, face into the wrong direction. Um, the, the new government um, sees itself as a um, coalition of progress, but progress, they do not see it in a technological way, but more in a um, way that is to transform our society. Um, so, for example, the um, um, legalization of um, uh, cannabis um, is a big um, a proposal of the new government. Um, the idea of adding up uh, to mother and father, um, another mother and father, um, is something what, especially in uh, conservative uh, circles um, or in communities, disturbs their uh, people. And, uh, um, I could add up many other things. Uh, so uh, in these fields where we feel that's not progress, but um, that's um, an ideological movement, um, we would put up a stop sign. And um, from our Bavarian perspective, we would also demonstrate um, how we also could be a role model in opposition um, to wrong decisions in uh, Berlin. Um, also, when it comes to supporting the German Mittelstand um, mm -hmm. or the, the lower income um, uh, people, um, I do not really see that the new, new government is addressing here the, um, the burning issues, um, the exploding energy prices, um, inflation, etc. That's all on the table. And uh, so far, we have uh, not seen any, any proposals here how to, how to fight it. We'll, we'll drill down on a couple of those topics in, in just a moment, but I have one more question um, about the opposition before we move on. And, and that is, you alluded to this earlier in our, in our conversation, 
Um, during the election campaign, we, we all saw some tensions between the CDU and the CSU. Um, now that, that the CDU-CSU is in opposition and um, with it being clear that Friedrich Merz um, will become the chairman of the CDU, um, what do you think the future relationship between the CDU and CSU will be under this new CDU leadership? We know that um, we are strong together. Um, we are called a union um, of CDU and uh, CSU. And um, so the both chairmen, Marcus, uh, Chairman Markus Söder and uh, the designated uh, chairman of uh, CDU, uh, Friedrich Merz said, um, we do not want to see that um, we repeat the, the last year. Um, so we are very clear when it comes to our fundamentals, I would like to say, so our party principles, um, we have a common understanding what is important at these times um, to address um, the, the, the value of freedom, uh, for example, um, or of, uh, competition of um, responsibility um, for each other uh, and all this stuff. So very, the, the very basics of our both parties, uh, we agree 100%. Um, Secondly, we agree on, on, the, on the proper strategy um, now in the role of opposition in, in Germany. And for us as CSU, it's very clear that, of course, Friedrich uh, Merz, the designated chairman, is going to be the new opposition leader uh, in, in Germany. Um, that's not Markus Söder. He's um, chairman of CSU and Bavarian prime minister. Uh, and the new opposition leader in Germany, this role is um, the role of, um, of Friedrich uh, Merz. Um, we have to focus now on um, the upcoming elections um, in the German states. Um, in this year, we have four um, really important um, state elections. And in the year 23, um, we have elections here in Bavaria. Um, we want to regain strength in the states um, to be in a good position then uh, for the next uh, elections on federal level. One final question on this uh, comes from one of our viewers who's who's curious who Friedrich Merz listens to when it comes to foreign policy. Um, the questioner goes on to write, um, in the CDU, CSU, who are the people who are shaping the direction of Germany's center-right foreign policy thinking, and who should we be watching? Well, that's a good question. Um, our most important think tank is our faction, the CDU-CSU faction uh, in the uh, German Bundestag. Uh, we have all um, the very experienced um, uh, deputies uh, there, and um, I'm quite sure that he will rely on the expertise um, and the experience of um, these members. Um, and of course, um, he by person is a um, a transatlantic person. Um, he was chairman of the Atlantic Brücke, um, you know this, and um, mm -hmm. for that reason I um, do not think that he needs here any sort of um, special support. Um, again, we have a very common understanding of uh, what's going on and what's important in Germany and Europe for, for the upcoming years. Thank you for that. I'd, I'd now like to switch gears and, and talk a little bit about um, some economic issues, which um, is something that, that you have a, a deep background in, um, having, having studied economics. Uh, I had a number of questions prepared, but one of our viewers submitted a question that I think ties a, a number of different threads together. She writes, how does the opposition view the government response so far on two key economic issues? First, high German inflation, particularly on energy prices, and second, fiscal policy, where the new coalition is signaling some expansion of spending at both the German and the European level, particularly for environmental issues and climate concerns. We are really concerned um, that the new government uh, and the new finance minister, uh, Christian Lindner, started their term by expanding um, the, the budget um, by uh, a, an, an additional 60 billion debt. Um, 
we see this really not as a burden because it's another uh, 60 billion, but it's a very bad sign for Europe. Um, when we were in talks for um, building a coalition uh, with CDU and CSU um, after the election, um, especially the Greens told us um, that um, they want to emphasize, um, or they want to, they want us to emphasize um, the flexibility um, of um, the uh, the uh, ter uh, of the Euro European um, 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 what's that? Uh, the stabilization, stabilization pact. pact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the growth and stability uh, pact, and uh, because their idea is um, we have to strengthen Europe, and um, that means we have to support um, Italy and um, other countries, stabilizing them, and that means in the end entering into a transfer union uh, in Europe, and um, in the end this made it up in the um, coalition agreement because you can read there um, there's they call it um, we have to um, move on with the flexibilization um, of the uh, stability agreement uh, in Europe um, my point is if we in Germany are not in a position to stick to our rules then it's even harder um, to tell others in Europe um, that they um, should um, stick um, uh, to the common rules in uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. and for that reason, it's it's a very bad decision, a bad sign, and um, we are going to fight this uh, decision on uh, uh, federal court um, in a couple of weeks. So, so just to, was, to push. No, no. I mean, it, it was basically um, the 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 fiscal policy which you've you've addressed, and then the other was um, the government's response to inflation, um, particularly as it relates to energy prices. And to make a long story short, um, so far we have not seen any sort of proposal how to address the um, exploding uh, inflation. And so, so I guess, you know, a follow-up question to that is, is if, you, if you were in charge um, or if you were advising the government, what would your recommendation be for um, establishing a more sound fiscal and budget policy? Our idea um, also in our election campaign uh, was um, to rely on um, strengthening um, the economic power so by strengthening the economic power, um, you can overcrowd your debt. Um, so we did after the financial crisis in the year 2008 and 2009, um, by having seen really a very um, significant um, growth rate um, over a period of more than 10 years, uh, we were able to meet again the Maastricht criteria. Uh, so to, to move our... Uh, that um, ratio under the 60% line uh, of uh, GDP. And um, that would be, again, our proposal now um, how to deal with uh, all the corona debts. Um, the mm -hmm. new government decided on another way, um, not to lowering taxes, but um, to add additional burdens um, for our companies. Um, basically for everyone um, with all the climate transformation. And um, we don't believe that this um, is uh, the right way. As, as you mentioned earlier, um, there is a tremendous need in Germany for investments in technology, digitalization, infrastructure. Um, I guess there, there are sort of two questions. One is, do you, do you think from a policy standpoint that the new government um, is is trying to do enough or, or as outlined in the coalition agreement will try to do enough. Um, but then as a, a follow-up question to that, don't these investments make it even more difficult to achieve a balanced budget because of the expenditure that's required in these areas? To be fair, I would say it's definitely too early to call um, because uh, 
again, the new government is not in office for, for, for more than 100 days. And um, for that reason, of course, um, there was not enough time to come up with all the ideas and uh, proposals. And um, to be fair, um, I'm happy to see uh, all the proposals, but so far, um, they just have not been there. Mm -hmm. One of the, the topics that's also come up um, in a couple of, of viewer questions is, of course, um, climate policy and, and energy policy. And this played a, a very big role in the election campaign um, by all of the, the candidates for, for chancellor. Um, and it, it seems as if Germany is really struggling to find the right energy policy, um, phasing out coal and nuclear energy at the same time. Um, makes it very difficult to keep energy prices under control and to ensure secure and stable energy supplies. Um, one of our viewers goes so far as to, to write, Germany shut down three nuclear power plants at the end of last year and is set to shut down the last three at the end of this year. Meanwhile, EU neighbors such as France, Poland, and others are heavily investing in building new nuclear power plants, and even the EU sees nuclear energy as a main factor in the transition period to 100% renewable sources of energy. How do you think Germany can remain an industry nation under the traffic light coalition? And should the CDU-CSU change course and advocate for transitional nuclear power again? No, we will not do so, um, to be very clear. Um, there's uh, in Germany, um, let's say, an agreement. Uh, so, of course, some people come up with the question, could we re-enter again into a nuclear energy? But um, from a technological point of view and from a point of or perspective of acceptance, um, the support is just not there. And for that reason, uh, nuclear power is not an option anymore for Germany. Uh, we are now on track um, or for energy transition in Germany. Of course, it's a bet, a big bet uh, for the future. Um, we are the only country in this size uh, with this economic power um, to stick to a transition of both leaving the fossils and the coal and uh, nuclear power. Um, and this could, can only be successful if you really uh, focus very much on adding up new power, uh, renewables, um, building up new power lines, um, bringing up um, um, the smart grid or moving forward uh, with all the smart grid things. Um, and um, in the end, also relying um, on uh, the European energy markets. Um, mm -hmm. And um, in the end, um, there is a st strong belief uh, that we can do so, but um, there's a, still a long way to go. So we are, we are not there. Uh, and many things, uh, we need many things where it's necessary to take action or new action uh, on bringing uh, forward um, all the sorts of renewables, um, not focusing only on wind energy like the Greens do, but also moving mm -hmm. forward with hydrogen power, um, um, with uh, biomass, uh, with uh, photovoltaic, uh, so with all um, the sort of things that are somehow working in Germany. So one, one more um, economic question, and, and that it comes back to inflation, which we talked about a little bit before, but, but inflation is really a, a great matter of concern on, on both sides of the Atlantic. And I'd be curious to know what your guidance or recommendation would be to the new government on how to address these inflationary trends, particularly given the impact that they have, that it has on lower and middle income households. We believe it's important um, to lower uh, the the burdens uh, for these lower income um, households. Um, uh, our proposal is we have a concept in Germany that is called Pendlerpauschale. So if you're a commuter, then um, you get a certain um, amount of money back by tax. And um, our idea is the way. Um, so 10 times higher energy prices um, 
uh, fuel prices means uh, 10 times higher um, tax percentage you uh, get back. Um, that's just one idea. So in the end, our idea is um, we have to uh, compensate um, the additional costs uh, by lowering um, the regulatory um, percentage um, on energy um, yeah, in the end to compensate um, the additional costs. Thank you. And I, I'd now like to, to pose one more viewer question before asking a, a, a final closing question of you. Um, one of our, our viewers um, raises a question about, about the situation with Russia and, and Ukraine and, and ties it in very nicely to the energy issues. So in a sense, we're coming full circle in our conversation. Um, and he writes, if, if Putin further invades Ukraine, would the CSU support a cancellation of Nord Stream 2 or at least its suspension until Kremlin-supported forces withdraw um, to, uh, to, to its recognized borders? Um, and how does the CSU assess the government's backbone, particularly that of the SPD, vis-a-vis -vis Putin's behavior? I strongly believe um, that we have serious issues here, um, that um, we are in a really serious phase um, of this uh, conflict, um, given all the developments. Um, on the other hand side, I would really like to stress that um, we should not, or we should try everything um, to not further escalate the things. And um, for that reason, my personal uh, belief is um, that we need new formats or we have to revitalize um, existing formats um, of dialogue, um, of um, conversation. Uh, look, in uh, more in less than uh, four weeks, um, we have the Munich Security Conference. Um, and um, I think um, that could be a good place uh, to bring all the parties together um, in order to avoid um, a further escalation. But on the other hand, of course, being very clear vis-a-vis -vis Russia um, um, and uh, sending um, very consequent signals. So I think it's, a, it's somehow a double strategy necessary. On the mm -hmm. one hand, a dialogue, and on the other hand side, clear messages, uh, and of course, uh, um, being ready also for consequences, but not always talking about what could be in the case of, because no one wants to see this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, so finally, um, as you mentioned, uh, the, the new government has not made it past the 100-day mark, and so it, it ser deserves some benefit of the doubt as it comes up to speed and, and works its way up the learning curve. Um, what are the issues that are on your scorecard? Um, how are you watching this new government, and, and how will you rate its success or lack of success in addressing the the wealth of issues that you've that you've talked about well um there are two hearts uh, insights um so one is of course i want to see success uh success of our country um um shaping uh, the, a good future um as every politician wants on the other hand side of course um I want my party um, regaining strength uh, and coming again into power. Uh, and uh, for all this, uh, you need a good strategy. But there's a saying in Germany, um, you should have a good strategy, but you should not talk about this, uh, especially not, not right now, because it's uh, uh, too early. So um, I would say, or I would propose, we should have a follow-up uh, in a couple of months or maybe a year. And then I would tell you more about our Bavarian success sto story, because for us as CSU, it's always very important, not only being successful on federal level, but also on state level. Bavaria is somehow the economic powerhouse of Europe. Uh, and um, we want it uh, to remain the political powerhouse um, for the CSU, for the conservatives in uh, Germany. Um, that's somehow one of the backbones um, of the conservatives, not only in Germany, 
but all over Europe. Well, Markus Blume, I want to thank you for, for making the time to talk with us today. I know that you have an incredibly busy schedule, and I would love to come back to your offer to, to speak with us again um, and to assess both the government as well as the activities of the opposition, but also the developments in, in Bavaria. And I hope that we have an opportunity to, to speak again in the not too distant future and, and even to see each other in person. So thank you again for, for making the time to join us today. And thanks, of course, to the Hans Seidel Stiftung for partnering with the ACG. Uh, we are always delighted to work with the Hans Seidel Stiftung and look forward to more collaborative discussions again in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts uh, here. Uh, and um, I would like on the other side, um, um, telling you that there's a standing invitation for you for our transatlantic forum um, on February the 18th. Um, so uh, right um, at the Munich Security Conference. Well, thank you for that. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you. Bye. Okay. Tschüss. Ciao, ciao. Servus. Auf Servus. Genau. <laughs> genau.